I've been Barcelona's manager for two seasons, but the truth is, I have completely failed. When Barca's board offered me the contract and this job, the goal was to win the Champions League. But in these two seasons, all I've done is get humiliated and humbled, not once, but twice. And now I'm in my final year of the contract, and if this season I fail to win the Champions League, I'm surely getting sacked. Okay, guys, hang on. I don't think we've done that bad of a job so far. Because let's be real, we started off with a pretty average team with a lot of financial issues. And we still won the Spanish Cup. Then we also took the fight to Real Madrid and won La Liga. All while developing youngsters like Lamin Yamal and Pedri. But yeah, it's true that when it matters, big occasion, Champions League, we've not delivered. But in Season 3, that's what we need to fix. It's not going to be easy though, because if you remember, Jules Conde, one of our best center backs he betrayed us and joined psg i'll be real i can't blame him because he ended up winning the champions league with them but that puts us in a position where if we don't sign a new center back we're gonna be stuck with eric garcia who's only 80 rated christensen would have been perfect Bruh. but he wants to leave in fact he doesn't even respect me as a manager so there's no point keeping him but wait guys before we get our hopes up and go into the market to bring in a new center back let's just see how much the board has given us for our budget and about that we've got an email from the Barcelona board. Dear Mr. S2G, I'm pleased to announce that the club's financial situation has improved a lot, and it's thanks to player sales like Lewandowski and Jules Conde. This season, we will be able to support you with a strong budget, but don't forget, if you don't win the Champions League, we're sacking you. Okay, guys, I didn't need the pressure at the end, but yes, guys, finally, we've got a reasonable budget. In fact, more than reasonable, 180 million. With that, I'm sure we can find a quality centre-back that fits the bill that fits our style of play oh this is brilliant but before we go into the market and start making signings it's time to do something i know you guys have been waiting for a press conference oh i can already feel that i'm gonna get absolutely grilled because of how bad we've done in the champions league these past few seasons first question i don't see you winning the champions league this season what are your plans after getting sacked emotional damage Yo, hold up, there's no faith in me at all. I'm seeing so many comments like this. Nah, man, this season, we've had now a lot of time with the team. We bring in a center back. I think we're gonna win the Champions League, boys. I gotta believe that. Okay, moving on. Gaffer, just one question. If you get a chance to sign Kylian Mbappe for free, will you pounce on the opportunity or will you try to sign a more of a system player? Bro, this is like asking a hungry man if he wants some food. Of course, I'll pounce on the opportunity to sign Mbappe. But that's not gonna happen because we're still a bit broke. You should give the number 10 to Lamine Yamal. His performances are great and he deserves it. Talking about Lamine Yamal, I gotta announce the fact that for season 2, he was our player of the season. The amount of goals he scored, it was crazy. The kid is only 18, he's gonna turn 19 soon, but yeah, he's hit 90 overall and is only getting better. Oh, I just realized this contract's expiring. Don't worry guys, we're on it. We're renewing Lamine Yamal's contract. I think he's gonna get an absolutely incredible wage rise. We're gonna have after all from like 150 or something minimum and he's accepted it so there you go we've got that sorted at least but although Lamine was our best player last season if you remember in the Champions League the chances he squandered was what cost us but you know what I'm still keeping my faith in Lamine Yamal so much so that I'm going to give him the number 11 now you're asking why am I not giving him the number 10 well that's with Ansu Fati and he did nothing wrong last season in fact he just constantly got better and I don't see a reason why I should be snatching Fatih's kit number and giving that to Yamal, that's only gonna create a bit of beef between the two. But yeah, number 11 I think suits Lamine. Our final press conference question though is an extremely serious one. Because it says serious question. Oh, how do you eat your cereal? I mean, that is a serious question to be fair. Because there's only one way to eat your cereal right. And I'm gonna show that. Alright guys, this is the only right way to get your cereal. You first put in the cereal. If you put the milk first, you're gonna menace to society. And then you've got the milk. Oh, I spilled the milk. Oh my god. Well, that's fine. Um, you just have to pour the milk next. And yep, there you go. A, a perfect bowl of cereal, but... <sighs> I'm an idiot. Well, on that terrible disappointment, back to the tent. I did not expect to be teaching you guys the correct way to have cereal in the press conference, but if it can help convert some people who actually put the milk first, bro, I've done my job. But now, speaking of my job, if I don't want to get sacked, we need to get ourselves a new centre-back. Oh, Conde, why did you have to leave us, honestly? But I think I know another French centre-back who could really
really do the job for us. And his name is Jean Claire Todibo, oh. but he's only 82 rated. He's playing at Wolfsburg. His career has kind of slowed down. Ah, he's played at Barca before, and I thought this would be an interesting option. But nah, we need someone better, especially if we want to win the Champions League. What about another Frenchman in William Saliba? Now we're talking, but oh, look at that valuation. Bro, it's crazy. He's worth 83 million. If I can maybe get that fee down by putting, say, Christensen in the deal, that's the only way we could sign a player like him. Here we go, negotiating with Mikel Arteta. How much do I pay for this? Okay, first, let's put Christensen in this swap deal. You guys know he, he disrespected me, betrayed us when we needed him. Maybe we would have won the Champions League last season if he hadn't created such a fuss. But hey, we're putting him in the swap deal here, chucking in about 45 million alongside it. And let's see what Arsenal think. And oh, it's actually worked, bro. Mikel Arteta, that was quick. Oh, and looks like convincing William Saliba is a piece of cake. He is desperate to join Barcelona and we've pulled it off. And with that, we finally got a defender that I believe can take us to the Champions League trophy. Oh, him and Ronald Araujo at the back together. Oh boy, it's gonna be crazy for any attack. But honestly, what a team. Now that Saliba is there, I'm, I'm loving the look of this side. Oh, I just got this email that Gundogan has left the club. He agreed a deal to join join Juventus. I don't blame him because when we could have re-signed him, we decided not to. But to be honest, I'm not even considering signing another midfielder. Because of course, we've got Pedri and Gavi, but we've also got Fermin Lopez, who I kind of want to start giving more and more opportunities. Maybe this season, he could play a great part from the bench. And even Pablo Torre is there. So I'm not too worried. We're now on transfer deadline day. And there are a few rumors about our players like Cancelo to Newcastle, but I'll be honest, we're not changing anything in our team. It's, it's perfect right now. And I just can't wait to get the Champions League underway. Oh, but guys, I've just received a message from Iñaki Peña. I've got an offer from a Premier League club, and since I've been on the bench for so long, I would rather join them. I don't want to keep warming the bench. Ah, oh, Iñaki, you can't be doing this on transfer deadline day, because I'm about to reject that offer. We need a backup goalkeeper, because what if De Stegen gets injured or something? Sorry, Iñaki, you're staying. Oh, that's gonna piss him off a lot. Deadline day is over, and it's now time for the Champions League group stage draw. Ooh, that's an interesting group with Napoli, PSV and Kiev, but I think we should be able to top it. And of course, we're kicking off our Champions League journey with Saliba at the back. I'm excited for his debut. First game in the group stages against Kiev. I don't even want this to be a doubt. We need to get a resounding victory here. Uh. Wow, guys, just wow. Here I was talking about winning the Champions League and all. Final year in our contract. And this is how we start our Champions League season. Brilliant. Davi's run has been crazy as he looks for Ansu Fati, who's got the pace. Cut back inside and Julian Alvarez, let's go. First Champions League goal of the season, but we're not done. We need to win this game. And that's full time. We can't even beat Kiev. For some reason, the Champions League and myself just don't get along. Bro. This is the last year of our contract with Barcelona, by the way. We bottled the Champions League. It's over. We're getting sacked. And just look at how well we're doing in La Liga for contrast. Top of the league, unbeaten, yet we just can't seem to figure the Champions League out. We've got a trip to Naples next to face Napoli and maybe this is our chance to just figure the team out and get back to winning ways because it's getting a bit embarrassing now. Man I'll be honest Napoli are really good we're being pushed back massively it's been about 20 minutes and we haven't created anything. That could change though with Julian Alvarez who is relentless does not give up linking up with nope. Pedria but uh, it's not good enough this Napoli defense is crazy good. One player that's been missing in this game has been Lamine Yamal. Where's his confidence gone? Oh it's a a perfect ball for Lamine Yamal. It's finally time for him to respond now. This is his chance. Lamine 1v1. There you go. He's back to scoring goals for us. I know he had a bit of a blip in form. After all the hate he got for bottling in the Champions League. But I'm hoping with this goal we'll see the best version of him. No, no, no. Why is our defense so further up the field? A massive chance for Napoli. Creature. Oh my god. Did he just one touch flick it up and then bang? Bro, how good is Creature? But why are we doing Doing this to ourselves in the Champions League. That's another game we've drawn at the end. I cannot believe this. Guys, this is literally reminding me of our first season with Barcelona where we just couldn't win a game in the Champions League and we got kicked out. If that happens here, that would just be embarrassing. Do you know what? Let's just calm down. We've shown that we can win trophies. We've won the Spanish Cup. We've won La Liga. We've got a 
good team. Nothing's lost yet. We just need one win in the Champions League to get some momentum. Much more like it as we're sending Gavi through on goal. Go on, Gavi. This is your chance. And bang, Gavi gets the goal. This is what we need from Barcelona. We're actually playing really well, but the scoreline is only 1-0. And right now, it's a chance for PSV. Don't let him shoot. Oh, my days. I knew that was going to happen when he opened up space. I don't know what was this Dagan doing. Guys, if we don't win this game, I think, yeah, we're going to be out of the Champions League. That's for sure. I might even get sacked directly if we lose this game. Ansu, brilliant control. Alvarez, let's go. That was a classic Tiki Taka Barcelona goal. We needed that. We can't lose this game. No, no, 90th minute. We're going to have to defend. This is crazy. Please, no, De Stegen saves it. Oh, my. Why is the Champions League so difficult? I have no idea. The group stages are so chaotic. What are we going to do in the knockouts? Thankfully, guys, with that win over PSV, we were able to just stabilize things, and we've topped our Champions League group. But, boy, was it hard work. We're now heading to the January transfer window, and honestly, I've not planned to make any improvements to this team. Wait a minute. When did this happen? Julian Alvarez with a torn hamstring? He's going to be out for the next three months? Wait, wait. Wait, three months? That means he's going to miss the Champions League round of 16? Who are we facing, by the way? No, no, no. Chelsea. Oh, my. We've not been tested like this. Bro, Chelsea in the round of 16. And we don't have Alvarez. Well, that completely changes my plans. For this trans window, we need to figure out a way and get in a striker because I don't want to be using Ferran Torres as like a false nine or something. That just wouldn't work. Thankfully, we've got about 52 million left in our budget. Guys, it's time to bring in a striker in this window otherwise we're gonna be in trouble and once again knocked out in the round of 16 nah, nah, we're not doing that i'm also thinking for the striker position why not sign someone who's completely different a player whose profile we don't really have in this team maybe a tall striker who's great in the air and i think i found the perfect player yusuf and Nesseri. the moroccan is only 28 83 overall yeah but six foot two bro he's got 92 jumping he'll offer something completely different and that's the kind of player we need in the squad. No point signing another player who's just like Julian Alvarez. This is perfect. Oh, and he has played in La Liga for Sevilla, so that gives him a bit of experience in the league. The only thing is, does he fit our budget? I think he should. Maybe we should be able to get him for like 40 million. That would be amazing. There you go, about 45 and we should have a deal, but I'm gonna be stingy. We're gonna negotiate as much as we can over here. 41 million and a deal is struck. And look at that. He's accepted his role already. He knows he's gonna be a rotation squad player. There's going to be no doubts that once Julian Alvarez is back, he's going to be starter once again. But Enes said he's going to play an important role for us, especially in the knockouts. And with that, Barcelona have got themselves a new striker in Enes Seri. Here we go, boys. It's time for the Champions League knockouts. Facing Chelsea is going to be so difficult. Barcelona already have a lot of history with them. And of course, Julian Alvarez is unavailable for this game. Enes Seri, our new signing, is going to have to step up. And don't forget the round of 16 was where we got knocked out last season. This time, we're facing an even more difficult opponent in Chelsea. Nah, final year of the contract. We're not going home yet. With Enneseri in the team, we are definitely going to make use of that physical presence. He headed the ball down brilliantly then. Let me nope. with an early chance. No, it stopped. De Jong's got the ball. Maybe a cross. And oh, it's a lovely delivery. And Lamine Yamal at the back post. What a finish. I'm so happy that it's Lamine Yamal who puts us into the lead. Because remember, last season, he missed every chance in the knockouts. But now, Lamine gets his moment for redemption. The job's not done yet, though. You guys know how inconsistent we were in the group stages. Anything can still happen. I told you the job's not done, though. Because Chelsea have a chance in Madueke. <laughs> Ronald Araujo, what a challenge that was. Guys, I think if we somehow make it 2-0 here at the Stamford Bridge. We're going through to the next round. Lamine Yamal, another chance. He should score. And Lamine this time does not bottle it. Lamine has got his redemption this season. It's full time, guys. And I think we've done enough to make it through to the next round. And yep, we've knocked out Chelsea in the round of 16. And through we go to the quarterfinals where we're going to be up against PSG. Oh, boy. I'm going to be facing Jules Conde, the man who betrayed us. Yep, this is going to be our toughest test yet. The good thing is that Julian Alvarez is back from his injury so we will have a fully fit first team. But still, look at this PSG team we're gonna be up against. It's absolutely unbelievable. I know we're up against Mbappe, but we gotta believe in ourselves. Oh, and don't 
forget, Usman Dembele is also playing against his former club here. Once again, there's so much history between Barca and PSG. They are one team I do not want to get knocked out against. So let's give it everything. Against PSG, I think we need to be prepared to not having the ball that much because they've just got some unbelievable players. But we need to make our moments count. Like right now, Balde running with pace. But now, nah, passes like that. Oh, we've got a gift. Ansu Fati threw on goal. What a chance. Ansu, he scores. We've just gotten a gift from PSG. Barcelona take the lead in the Champions League. Moments like this can be game-changing. PSG are absolutely going to be rattled because I think they've been the better side so far, but we just kind of like stole a goal over there. And let's hope we can continue making it count. Oh, it's so nice to have Julian Alvarez back in the team as he looks for Ansu Fati. He's having his best game in a Barcelona shirt here. Ansu, no, should have scored that. No, 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 we've made one mistake. Nope. And De Stegen had to bail us out there. I'm so glad. Oh, now towards the end, PSG are really piling up the pressure. Saliba, he's not going to get bullied Ooh. there. And oh, that was a bad one. But we need to put in challenges like this. It's only a yellow card. It's fine. Oh, but yeah, if I concede from this free kick, it's going to be painful. But Mbappe has literally never scored a free kick in his career. I do not see him doing that now. So, oh, Reese James, <laughs> he just stole that one from Mbappe. It's done, boys. Full time. 1-0 Barcelona. By no means is this tie over. But I think we've got a solid advantage. We're heading now for the second leg. As long as we keep our heads cool, don't do anything silly, I think we'll go through. Oh, Lamine. Lamine has just broken through. PSG caught napping. Still Lamine. Still Lamine. Oh, that's one of the most iconic Champions League goals, I think. Lamine Yamal cutting through the PSG defense. That is sensational. Bro, I cannot believe he's actually pulled it off. The dribbling at the end there is just a little shimmy to beat Jules Corte of all players. It had to be him. Guys, you know what? This could be a performance where we put a statement in the Champions League and a warning for any team that's remaining. Let's destroy PSG here. Okay, maybe I've gotten too excited. Maybe I've gotten too excited. Yeah. Mbappe could save the Stegen. Yo, PSG absolutely shook out. Conte has been sidestepped again. He's been humbled in this game for PSG. Let's go. Not gonna lie, seeing Conte sad has definitely made me happy. We've done the job. We've knocked out PSG through we go to the semi-finals. Semi-finals now of the Champions League and we've drawn Arsenal. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, after knocking out PSG, I'm feeling pretty confident about getting the job done against Arsenal. But wait, guys, I've just got a message from Marc-Andre de Stegen and it's not looking good. Hey, boss, I've been meaning to tell you this, but I've been playing in pain for the entire season. My knee is completely gone and the doctors have said I need to get knee surgery. If I don't, I might have to retire. Oh, wow guys, the Stegen is being told to go into knee surgery. That would basically mean he'll miss the rest of the season. Can you imagine, boys? No De Stegen in the Champions League? Bro. Wait, but he's also said, but I do understand how important the Champions League is. I'm willing to play through the pain, even if it means my career could be at risk. Yo, De Stegen, what a guy. But you know what? I don't want to put a player like him through that. We'll let him go for surgery. And I guess we're back to trusting Iñaki Peña. To be honest, the last time we trusted Peña in the Spanish Cup, we ended up winning it. I'm hoping he can do the same again. What a moment this is for the Barcelona Academy player. Also, guys, before we play this massive semi-finals game, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit a million subscribers, and with your help, we can get there soon. And here we go. The quest for that trophy begins now. We're teaching Arsenal a footballing lesson in this one. Julian Alvarez, back for Cancelo. Cancelo goes for it. Oh, that was an insane attempt. We might still have a chance. Cleared away. I just realized that William Saliba is playing against his former club now as well. That's another storyline. I'm hoping it'll work in our favor because right now, Frankie de Jong might be able to go through. He's got the strength. Keeps going, Frankie. Cut back for Lamine. Nope. Oh, the shot was not good enough. Gavi still has it. Gavi goes for it. Ramsdale saves. Guys, we've got Arsenal pinned back. We need to win this first leg. Absolutely. Oh, but slowly Arsenal are getting back into this game and it's not looking good for us. Martin Erdegaard. Where's why our defense just walked through? William Saliba. I was trying to control a different defender and it was just chaos. Nah, nah, nah. Not this way. We're not getting knocked out of the Champions League this way. That was ridiculous. Man, ever since we conceded that goal, it feels like the confidence of our players 
Liz has kind of dipped up Barcelona. Gonna bottle once again now. We we can't do that. No, if we can see it again, it's gonna be horrendous. We're 2-0 down. We're 2-0 down to Arsenal. Colo freaking Muani. No. I guess we really are missing to stay in because Pena hasn't been able to save anything. Ansu though. Ansu though's broken through. Gets us a goal back. That was needed. That was needed. Gives us a bit of hope. Ansu Fati. I think him going on that loan spell to Brighton was the best thing that happened to him because he's come back as a top, top player. One goal by Ansu has really opened things up. Julian Alvarez outside of his right boot. Suddenly, Arsenal have crumbled. Guys, I don't think I've ever seen a team crumble like Arsenal here. Ansu Fati might just have the pace to keep going here. Has to bring it inside. Alvarez, Pedri, Lamine Yamal. Massive chance. Oh, he puts it in the 90th minute. Crazy comeback. Yo. Arsenal's morale must be finished. I cannot believe we've just pulled this off. That is honestly ridiculous. One of the craziest nights at the camp now for Barcelona. Bro, Arsenal's players, they look completely deflated. Guess what? The comeback in the first leg was too damaging for Arsenal to do anything in the second leg. We've knocked them out and booked our spot in a Champions League final. Also, look at the season we've had in La Liga. Near perfect. 101 points. This team that we've built has honestly gone over and beyond. Look at that. Lamine Yamal with the La Liga Golden Boot scoring 29 this season. Lamine was also the La Liga player of the season. Bro, just look at his stats. It's it's crazy. 42 goals, 11 assists. What a player we've built. But I guess it all comes down to this and it's so fitting that we're up against Bayern Munich in the final. Three seasons of managing Barcelona. All the financial issues. Players leaving us. Everything that we've dealt with it comes down to this. And we've also got a chance to get revenge for that humiliating 8-2 defeat that Barca had to endure against Bayern. Also guys, our contract is about to end with Barcelona hence this could be the final game we play and I want to end it with the Champions League trophy. Here we go boys the big Champions League final we've worked so hard to get here we're not losing boys, we're not losing this is my chance of getting revenge for the 8-2 one thing I'm worried about is Iñaki Peña in such a high pressure game he's gonna have to put in the performance of his life. Bayern are completely different to any team we face. Look at them attack. This is bad. Oh my god, the post saved us. The post literally saved us there. Bayern Munich are completely dominating us. I've not faced a team as good as them so far with Barcelona. Like, this is crazy. I just can't seem to get the ball off them and now they've got a massive nope. chance here. Ronald Araujo, our captain, is blocking everything. But we've got to find a way to play out of this pressure. Peña with the big save. Jamal Musiala charging at us. Looking to shoot Peña again. So far, he He's definitely lived up to expectations. He's just got to keep that confidence flowing. The pace of Alejandro Balde is something we could maybe use in this game, but there's no support whatsoever. Balde's nope. going by himself, and he's not really a good finisher. But hey, that was our first chance at this game. It's given me a bit of confidence. Maybe Lamine might go for goal. Oh, that's a decent attempt. And Ansu's managed to keep it in. Still Ansu. Going for goal, but he's put it wide. Half time against Bayern Munich, and this has been the toughest game I think we've had. The pressure is on. The next 45 minutes, it's it's going to be intense, boys, but I'm hoping we can just about get over the line. Got to stop this attack from Bayern Munich somehow. Oh, no, we've made a mistake in the challenge. Marcus Terente. Oh, big save in Yaki Pena. He's being the hero yet again in a cup final. Set piece might give us a chance to do something. Decent delivery. Cancelo's header. Oh, that almost went in. No, no, no. Bad Munich are through. Iñaki Pena couldn't save it. No. Bad Munich take the lead. 66 minutes on the clock as well. Marcus Llorente. No. Not this way, boys. I'm not ending my Barcelona career with a loss. We are winning this game no matter what. But uh, it's so tough playing against Bayern. Oh, my God. We concede now. It is genuinely nope. over. Balde literally saved us there. Nah, these guys are wasting time now. Oh, Bayern Munich, you guys shouldn't be doing this. I see space for Lamine Yamal. Does he have the pace to run through? I think he just about does. Lamine, no, he's missed. Rebound. I can't believe we've not scored there. I cannot believe it. It's not done yet, though. It's not done yet, though. Lamine Yamal crossing it inside. Pedri. Oh, in deflection. Oh, my days. What luck. Incredible luck for Pedri to get the equalizer. Bayern Munich is stunned. That might legit be the luckiest deflection in football. Look at this. Pedri controls it. Comes off the licks, but goes off the post and in. Bro, I'm legit shaking. I cannot believe that just happened. 
happened? Oh, it's going to extra time against Bayern. Oh, my. Let me in. Oh, no, he's put it wide. That was so close to win it in extra time. Look at how close that was. No way, guys. This is actually going to penalties. My final game as Barcelona boss. Penalties are going to decide whether we win the Champions League or not. And don't forget, Iñaki Peña is going to be our goalkeeper. This is crazy, boys. Peña has got a chance to be a Barcelona hero for his life. But first one, he couldn't save. Ansu's got to be perfect. We're going right as well. Please, I believe. And it goes in. We just need one save from you, Peña, to just get a bit of momentum. One save, but it does not go the right way. With Alvarez, I'm going right as well. I'm going right as well. There you go. Come on. All we need is one save from you, Peña. One save. Peña has done it. Let's go. We still need to score. Lamine still needs to score. And he does. Advantage Barcelona. Come on, Peña. Etch your name in Blaugrana history. Ah, It's fine. As long as we keep scoring, we will win the Champions League. Pedri, put this one in. Done. Just one save now, and we'll be Champions League winners. Nah, Davies scored his. But you know what? Peña made that one save, and it's enough. Because Frankie de Jong could now do a madness. If he scores this, we will win the Champions League. Go on, Frankie. Frankie de Jong has done it. We've won the Champions League with Barcelona on pins. Revenge against Bayern Munich has been taken. Let's go. The board wanted me to win the Champions League in three seasons, and that's exactly what we've done. And by the way, just after we got into the dressing room, I received a call from the Barca board, basically Juan Laporta, and he said he wants to renew my contract as Barcelona boss. But you know what? I'm rejecting it. My job here at Barca is done. I've made them the world's best club, and soon it's time for me to look for a new club to manage. While you wait to find out the next club we're gonna manage why not watch me fix the worst Premier League club that was fun click here to watch that